the reason yeah. why they go against T3 is its pharmacokinetics can be unpredictable. And it's because yeah. T3 has a biphasic metabolism, has two points of metabolism. Moving over to the next group of drugs, um, the thyroid hormones. We have T3, mm. T4, sobiterone, GC1. And I put that in there because uh, sobiterone interacts with the thyroid receptors. And uh, that seems to offer less of a jittery effect and catabolic effect compared to actual T3, if you ramp that over 25 micrograms per day. So I've had, I have some experience with Sobitrom GC1. I'll run that on the next time that I diet at 100 micro or was it 100 micrograms or milligrams? Well, let me check my notes. Uh, micrograms. 100 micrograms <laughs> twice per day or once per day. And then I'll, I'll see if I continue that higher. And then I'll keep track of my thyroid uh, hormones, obviously, and blood work to see if there's any changes there. Um, but it's not known to really drop thyroid stimulating hormone. It's just known to interact with this thyroid receptor. It doesn't really alter um, your blood work parameters, but I'll, I'll confirm that. This is like seven, seven to 12 studies on it. So it will be a quick and easy experiment and a deep dive, but people are asking about it. But the last time I mm. ran it, I got good fat loss and, and metabolism out of it without like losing your legs. Like that's the downside of T3, in my opinion, a replacement dose at the end of a diet when you when your blood work shows that you're thyroid deficient, right? Um, then it's magic almost, but it always kind of shrink my legs now again mm. i do a good amount of cardio uh, maybe i wasn't taking enough steroids um i think two grams is quite a lot mm. <laughs> so so and that that always happened to me again legs is not a stronger body part for me but since you do cardio on that i, I felt that dosing the t3 before that or before bed so before fasted cardio before bed didn't really make a difference so i, I started splitting up the dose that had less of an effect. I think it's good to keep your metabolism going, but I think there's some warrant, um, some benefits to the sobiterome over T3 or T4. Uh, Kurt, do you supplement or recommend T4 with growth hormone? I can't remember reading I that. Don't, in your growth no. No, I don't, no. I don't, unless okay. labs would show otherwise. I would, yeah, I would, of course, I would always go by labs. And I would, yeah. I like to look at T4 like it's like the idol in your car. So just adding more T4 mm -hmm. doesn't say net more T3. No. So, I, you know, it, it's used clinically. I think it has a use, but I don't know about for bodybuilding, right? And, and so, I don't think there's any, yeah. any necessary need with growth hormone. That's kind of an antiquated way to look at it. Yeah. So, so I do see it with higher doses of growth hormone that the thyroid conversion speeds up. Like growth hormone in, increases deodenase enzyme activity mm -hmm. and thus T4 metabolizes into T3. And if you don't supplement with T4, or good amount of iodine in your diet, then mm -hmm. you see that T4 levels drop, then T3 we'll drop, drops, we'll and then thyroid stimulating hormone shoots up. But again, that's only proven with blood work. Yeah, but I see it more person. often than not that people need it, to be honest, okay. beyond like three IUs growth hormone per day. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen even... any thyroid stuff. Okay. Do you have like iodized table salt? Do you eat kelp? Uh, seaweed? I used iodized table salt, and <clears throat> um, my multivitamin has iodine in it, and I eat fish. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Dean. Yeah, I think it's useful depending on what you said with blood work. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I made a, a deep dive on our education about using T4 and T3 together in combination because this became a very popular thing of dosing both together, um, which to me made not a lot of sense. Um, mainly because when you take T4, you're increasing your total tyroxine of your body you're not direct mm -hmm. and then indirectly you're increasing your free tyroxine your free t4 mm -hmm. <clears throat> but by increasing your total tyroxine content and the half-life of t4 is five days um taking 100 micrograms which is technically a replacement dose with the half-life being five days by the time you get to the fifth day of taking 100 micrograms really in theory you've increased your level to 450 micrograms with mm with the dosing you've done and then when you've got too much tyroxine you increase thyroid hormone binding globulin to try and accommodate mm -hmm. that increase in active or free thyroid hormone so now your ft4 might not actually even change but the total t4 in the background might change yeah. and then um, then if you increase thbg you in theory could have an affinity then for your uh t3 of your body and now you've got a lower ft3 because of using t4 um 
And so if you take T4 and T3 together, the T3 is going to be the thing that's doing the active work in the body. The T4, if you're not utilizing it, it, you will store T4. Like we have a, to my knowledge, there is a peripheral pool of about 900 micrograms of T4 in the body. Okay. You're, you're just going to increase that pool of T4 and in theory raise THBG, which then might knock off your FT3. Mm-hmm. So it becomes just this vicious cycle. If you're going to use one, just stick with T3 and That's leave. What I would say. It, like this became a, almost like a fad in like UK coaching of, uh, like I'd see in consults, they, some would be taking 200 micrograms T4 and 25 micrograms T3. And you'd question like, why are you doing that? Oh, well, my coach said so. Well, does your coach actually understand what's going on when you're using the two of them? And then they're like looking at me. I'm like, well, I'll explain to you why and what's going to happen <laughs> if you use both. And all of a sudden, this whole, yeah, this whole, and you know, not, not to shit on anything. It's just like, it just doesn't make sense. Yes. Um, T4 is prescribed for hypothyroidism, but that in itself, when you get into the clinical guidelines and published guidelines, Half the endocrinologists say, yes, T4 monotherapy is amazing. The other half say, why are we doing this? It should be a combination therapy or it should be T3. T3. The reason Mm. why they go against T3 is it's pharmacokinetics can be unpredictable. And it's because T3 has a biphasic metabolism, has two points of metabolism. And for the unlucky few, when the first phase metabolism occurs, it can actually put someone hyperthyroid. Their level of free T3 can go actually too high for a period of a couple of hours. And that can bring palpitations, you know, anxiety, high heart rate. And so they might not necessarily agree with T3 as a medication. And so T4 is the gentler approach because you're coaxing the body into doing the conversion itself. Even in that instance with the biphasic metabolism, you could then just split the dose in two. So 12.5 and 12.5 are going Mm -hmm. in at opposite ends of the day. So then that peak level is lower, but the total daily concentration is the same because the half-life of T3 is 24 hours. So it's it's a much slower acting drug. Um, uh, uh, Well, I guess an easier to control drug uh, versus T4, which would be a slower acting drug is what I meant to say. So you're... To me, if you need thyroid support, just look at a physiological replacement of T3, which is on average 25 micrograms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I still like T4 is because, again, from blood work, I see that at higher doses of growth hormone, it seems that the, the endogenous production of T4 is not sufficient to keep up with the thyroid conversion. And most guys that are on steroids, which are known to reduce thyroid binding globulin levels. So you're actually increasing T4 levels and T3 levels, which also enhances the conversion, obviously, because the thyroid binding globulin would otherwise hold these thyroid hormones as a reservoir, similar to sexual binding globulin mm-hmm. does with steroids. But when you take steroids, SSBG comes down, uh, thyroid binding globulin levels come down, speeding up the conversion. And if you take T4, you maintain T3 levels on blood work, thyroid stimulating hormone levels stay in range, and SHBG levels come up slightly because T4 Mm -hmm. and T3 do increase SHBG levels alongside Mm -hmm. estradiol. And estradiol and and T3 and T4 are the primary regulators to Mm -hmm. keep that somewhat elevated on cycle. So I feel that there's a good amount of synergy there. Um, But again, if blood work shows that it's not needed, then why throw in another drug? I guess. And and again, I, I would only recommend it in a context of growth hormone or at the end of a cutting phase that has been lengthy where metabolism just starts to slow down basically. Mm -hmm. The other thing with THBG is androgens lower THBG, but Mm -hmm. with this um, estrogen epidemic we're observing, uh, (laughs) (laughs) estrogen actually raises THBG. So if you let your estrogen run wild, estrogen will raise THBG. So. I was going to say um, that's the most of the time I so you get double see thyroid fat. issues. Yeah, you know, when I see thyroid issues in men, it's generally you look at their estrogen first. If you control that, generally the thyroid stuff goes away. I don't know what this TRT community is on about, man, or some some uh, uh, educators. Know. I don't know. It's let it run. So I let it run around to grow my gynecomastia, right? And I got two inches across, baby. <laughs> two inches across. Yeah, I'll show you in the video. It'll be a graphic content for sure. But it's. 
it's really like goggles, dude. I could put it on my eye like a cucumber. And I said, it's twice the size as it was before. No libido issues, luckily. But then again, I have a hot wife, so that helps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, my estrogen is high. I don't have any libido, so it might be your wife. Well, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's free tea, if free tea is high enough, it usually with libido, it can counteract the high estrogen to some degree. Ah, right, because that's okay. the next thing we look at. So we look at estrogen for libido mm -hmm. first. And if, if the ratio of free tea to estrogen is okay, that's the second thing you look at. Okay, so, so but that would so only be the guys' estrogen will go high and the libido stays. It's, you look at the T next because it, it's not just uh, yeah. one thing that's going to cause libido. No, it's not it's just one thing. Yeah, my T yeah. was pretty high. I was on like the 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 Kurt Haven's uh, TRT protocol for a while, six hundred. <laughs> so my T T is three hundred now. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. It's been, okay. It's been for eight of the sixteen weeks now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I dropped it also, but I then added in the Anivar. It um, seems like such a waste to fill half, put half a CC in a three CC syringe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree, man. I agree. It looks so Full silly because I feel like I'm losing half of it in the needle. <laughs> <laughs> Your needle is like this long. It just seems so gets silly. You. I don't know. I, I every time like I'm drawing this like little like it's amazing that that does anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe if you inject every day. Um, but I'm I, just using it twice a week, but me too, man. I'm doing it twice a week. I'm kind of over all the injections, uh, after the, the, the Mr. Olympia cycle, I was doing like seven injections per day. I only have so much bandwidth for that stuff, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> okay. Um, I think we can put these thyroid hormones if respected in S tier, but again, it, it, it meant to be respected. So much Rome, I'm not hundred percent sure about. Um, so let's just say that that's pending because I don't have so much experience with it. And, and Dean, did you experiment with it, Kurt? Uh, it's been difficult no, it's... to find. It, it's interesting, like you said, it has, mm -hmm. you know, on paper, less cardio toxicity because of that um, specific tired receptor interaction. But yeah, I'd definitely like to trial it next time I properly diet to see what, what edge you get out of it. But bloods would be very interesting as well. Just put an S anyway. Has yeah. potential. It has potential, exactly. Okay. Dean, 